Greetings, and welcome to Dougie Dialogues. I'm Dr. Monique Mitchell, and we're webcasting from Dougie Center in Portland, Oregon. Dougie Center, the first childhood bereavement center in the United States, is recognized as an international leader in the childhood bereavement field for supporting children and families who are grieving. In these 30-minute discussions, Dougie Center staff explore language, trends, research, theories, and other relevant topics related to death, dying, loss, and grief. Our intention is to continue to shape the professional dialogue in the field, and we hope to spark some thought-provoking conversations along the way. Dougie Dialogues are primarily intended for an audience of professionals working to support children and families who are grieving. If you're looking for lived experience or support for your own grief, head on over to our Dougie Center podcast, Grief Out Loud, on iTunes or your favorite listening platform. Thanks so much for joining us and welcome to Dougie Dialogues. Well, hi there, Cheryl. I am so happy to be here with you today to talk um, with one another on this Dougie Dialogues about our lived experience and yeah. what it means to have been a participant at the Dougie Center and a volunteer and a staff person mm -hmm. and kind of um, how all of that lived experience really informs the work that we each mm -hmm. do. So thank you for doing this with me. Great. I'm happy to. Good. Well, maybe take a moment to introduce yourself and your story to folks who don't know um, you. Sure. Well, I'm Cheryl and I actually work at the Dougie Center um, right now, but I came as a participant. Um, when my husband died, I had a four-year-old daughter and her preschool teacher actually mentioned the Dougie Center. I had no idea even about the center. And she just thought it was a really good place for um, Amber and I to come. And so I think the interesting thing was I obviously was ready to have Amber come and get on board, but I obviously didn't need any help or anything like that. I was okay. Of you know? course. I mean, I'd be fine. Um, unbeknownst to myself, once I got into the adult group, um, it was just really amazing to be with other adults that were experiencing something that I was experiencing. I was so worried that I wouldn't know how to do grief. Yeah. Um, I don't, yeah, I don't know why I would think I would know how if this is something new to someone who, who would know. But at the same time, it's all going to be unique to all of us. Yeah. And so just being in group with others and knowing that I was normal and I was going to be okay. You know, I'm going to have to go, but go through my journey, but I was going to be okay. So yeah. Uh, now, didn't you come as a child participant, Brennan? Yes, I sure yeah. did, Cheryl, as, as lots of people know. And I know a lot of people have heard, heard my story um, that in 1987, when I was 12, my mom died of breast cancer. And luckily my dad had heard about the Dougie Center and he brought me to the Dougie Center. I remember really vividly Kind of that whole experience of knowing mm -hmm. that I needed support, knowing yeah. that I needed help, knowing that, you know, what was happening wasn't okay, and right. I wasn't right. okay, um, and I I knew I wasn't getting the support that I needed outside of the walls of the Dougie Center. So yeah. when my dad had had told me about the Dougie Center, I jumped at the chance to come, um, not knowing at all what I was yeah. getting myself into. So I came to a teen group at the Dougie Center, and I. You know, I, I must have probably almost even been 13 when I started potentially yeah. and came wow. for about a year and a half, maybe mm -hmm. a little longer than that. Yeah. And, you know, the Dougie Center was my lifeline during that time. And one of the things that I really recognize now is how much the tools and the skills that I learned at the Dougie Center by talking about my mom's death and all the aftermath, everything mm -hmm. that happened right. after the fact how much that informed and helped the rest of my life. Right. Um, and so for me, I really wanted to stay connected to the Dougie Center. So mm -hmm. after I uh, closed from my group, I started speaking a lot for the Dougie Center. And then yeah. I went through the volunteer training when I was 16 and I started in a group. And it's funny because, you know, it was so long ago, Cheryl, but we were in the same group. I know. We've talked about that before, which is interesting but yeah. yeah so that would have been 
back in, let's see, I was, I was 16. So it would have been in like 19, 91, 92, something mm -hmm. like that mm -hmm. um, is yeah. when I would have started. Yeah. And, and I was in the siblings group with you. Siblings. So we yep. facilitated mm -hmm. the siblings group together. And Cheryl, remind me, so remind me how long it's been since you came to group and or since you came to the Dougie Center with Amber. Yeah. And then how long have you been facilitating? Yeah. Well, I actually came to the center with Amber in 1990, I want to say September, October-ish. And I think the thing that's really funny was we, we closed after about a year and um, I actually wasn't ready to close. I wanted to stay. Um, but so I think that for me was like, I wanted to kind of, I wanted to give back in some way. Mm -hmm. I got so much from the center that I just... I needed to do something else. And so I think that's why I took the training. Um, but I also did a little bit of speaking mm -hmm. um, for the center as well. But then I took the training and I actually um, graduated, so to speak, on February 14th. And what I like about that is I won't forget that date because that's Valentine's Day. Oh, that's wonderful. <laughs> yeah. And so I've actually been volunteering for 25 years. Wow. So it's been a long time and I've done most of my work with six to 12 year olds, the sibling group. Um, I've done a little bit with adults. And so, but I think my heart's with those six to 12 year olds. Yeah. They just, they, maybe they help keep me young. I don't know. I <laughs> enjoy being around them. Well, what's yeah. amazing to me is that you, you know, many Dougie Center volunteers have been at the Dougie Center for, for decades. Yeah. You know, a we have time. a lot of longevity. Yes. Uh, what I think is really cool and interesting is that you have ultimately been in that same group for yeah. 25 years. Yeah. That, I mean, that's just amazing. Amazing. It is. And I've seen actually kiddos that have come back to the center to take the facilitator training that were six to 12 that are now teenagers in high school. So just to look at them, to see the difference in them, you know, when they first come into the building and they're just, I, I kind of look at it as someone that cocoon and then when they go to leave us this beautiful butterfly that's what the center does and that's what facilitators are able to be there with the kids and they can do that so it's just amazing to see them come back and see who they've become yeah so yeah it's really great yeah that's yeah. amazing i am always amazed at the amount of you know kids and families that come back to us in in yeah. so many different ways and you mm -hmm. know they come come back as volunteers after um and then also as staff members and yeah go you figure know, you and i both are yeah. are now staff members so tell me a little tell yeah. tell those who do, that don't know a yeah. little bit about your journey on to become a staff member yeah definitely um well i worked for the telephone company for 23 years prior um, to coming to the center and um we got laid off our jobs got moved to seattle and my daughter i believe that's right about when she was starting high school and I decided not to, to move to Seattle and, and take the job. And so then I was like, hmm, what have I always wanted to do? And I just, I always wanted to work at the Dougie Center. And so I thought, you know what, I'm gonna go back to school. So I went back to school, got my degree, my bachelor's degree in child and family studies, keeping fingers crossed that there would be a place for me because you just never know. <laughs> but I believe if you put it out there in the world, it will, it will happen. So in March of, Oh gosh, I'm trying to think when I started here. Okay, 2013? No. No, it has to be longer than that because I know it's over. 2007, March of 2007. Yeah. Okay. yeah. yeah. Because um, I've been here 14 years this March. Yeah. And became the program assistant. And it just, it was almost like, I think we've talked about like that full, full circle thing, mm -hmm. but just to be here and working and having that ability to really work with the families and give back what I was given because I don't think people realize just when you go through a loss like this and where you're at in your life, the center just really gives you that hope and that, that you're going to be okay. And so it's your journey to walk, but you're going to be okay, you know, and get through it. So yeah. yeah, it's just, it's been great. I love working here. Love it. Oh, yeah. well, I also love working at the Dougie. Yeah. Center. Your story is yeah, for, for me, I, you know, I always wanted to work at the Dougie Center. I remember, and I, I've told this story a lot. So <laughs> for, 
forgive me for those who are listening oh. and, and have heard it before, but you know, I remember being on a stage when I was 14 with Donna Sherman, who was, yes. who had just become executive director and she was mm -hmm. a board member before becoming executive director. And she's about to celebrate 30 years of service. 30 years, amazing. amazing. Um, and on staff, so not to mention her, her board time before, but she, right. she had just become executive director and we were on this stage and Dr. Alan Wolfelt was there and he was also co-presenting with Donna and they'd asked me to kind of be the token grieving kid to share yep. my story. <laughs> and I, I shared my story and I remember looking at both of them and and, and looking at Donna and just saying, I, I want to do that. I want to <laughs> exactly. do something. Yeah. So I, you know, I volunteered from 16 to 19. And mm -hmm. when I was 19, I left Portland and I was gone for almost a decade. Um, and the whole time, anybody who knows me well heard about the Dougie Center <laughs> and heard about how someday I was going to work at the Dougie Center. Yeah. And I came back um, in 2004. And I came back to work at the Dougie Center. I moved back to Portland to work yeah. at the Dougie Center. They didn't know it yet. Um, and within two weeks of moving back, the program assistant position opened up. Yep. And so <laughs> I started off in the same position you're in. Yeah, love it. Um, and quickly kind of realized, I thought I'd want to be on the program side of things. And then quickly realized that I really wanted to do fundraising and mm -hmm. outreach and kind of administrative type stuff for the Dougie Center. And so, um, you know, have been in the role of executive director for the last five years and um over five years now going on going on about yeah. five and a half years and exactly you know for me I think just being able you already mentioned this but being able to give back to a place mm -hmm. that helped me so much and then yeah. also just recognizing um Dougie Center's position kind of in the field and that people look to Dougie Center as a, as a leader in the field, yeah. that is so powerful to me because I feel like the work that we do here really helps grieving kids yeah. and families in Portland, but also mm -hmm. beyond, you know, beyond. Really oh, yeah. kind of ripples yeah. out across the world. Mm -hmm. So yeah. for me, you know, being a former participant and then a, a volunteer mm -hmm. and now a staff member has, has been that full circle moment yeah. that you talked yeah. about. Yeah. And I guess I should also mention just that um, my husband, Steve, and I adopted our daughter, Jordan, after the death of both of her biological yeah, parents. And so we also bring her to yes. a group at the yeah. Center, and yeah. she is a participant. So I'm a, I'm a parent, too. And mm -hmm. that's a whole different thing. And I wonder what your take is on this. But yeah. seeing the impact of the Dougie Center through the support it's given your child, um, mm -hmm. I think, gave me a whole new appreciation. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think it's, that's interesting because my daughter is now, I want to say 34 and she still volunteers at the benefit um, that we have and other things that we need done around yeah. here. But I think a lot of her experience here, getting the support that she needed. And then she did also come back as a young adult once she got into college and she wasn't sure if that was going to how helpful that would be. But then she realized, like many of us, that grief really doesn't end. It morphs into something different. And so what we're feeling at one age, we may not feel it and we'll feel something different at another age. And she was getting ready to graduate and that person wasn't here. Yeah. So by coming and having that ability to, to talk with young adults her age and, and get that support and know that it's, even though it might've been 20, 25 years later, it was still she still got her support. And, and I honestly believe that the center was part of the reason that she became a nurse. And that's oh, what wow. she's, doing now. she's also giving back in a different way. So yeah. I think in many ways, we all, you know, somehow maybe come full circle. It, it probably will look different for many of us and how we do that. But yeah, just think that the grief, uh, the grief is very impactful for many people. Yeah. And it really does change who we are and maybe how we look at things. Yeah. And yeah. can change your kind of whole trajectory in a lot of ways. Yeah. I know that my life would be completely different if my yeah. mom hadn't died. I mean, 180 degrees different. Yeah. I can't even imagine, you know? Yeah. The exactly. There. Yeah. One Mine thing, as well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Exactly. One yeah. thing that I've kind of recognized over the years of being on staff at the Dougie Center, you know, being on staff now, I think, um, let's see, 16 going on 17 years. And 
um, you know, one thing that I have seen is a lot of people who were participants come back to volunteer and a lot of people who were um, participants even come back on staff. And, you know, one of the challenges that I have seen for people, and, you know, I know a lot of people who watch this are folks in the field who are, right. you know, doing, doing this work. And one yeah. of the challenges that I have seen is, you know, is, is hearing stories that bring up your own story or the fact that we talk about death and dying exactly. and yeah. death all day, every day, mm -hmm. really impact kind of, you know, impact you and, and bring up your own stuff. And how do you manage that? How do you, yeah. as a volunteer and yeah. now, you know, and as a longtime staff member, how do you take care of yourself in all of that, Cheryl? Yeah, that's a great question. And I get that question a lot of times from my family and friends on like, how do you do something like this? And I think for myself, is um, we do hear a lot of stories and these stories are very impactful. What I try to do is just be present and listen to that story for that person, because that's really the important thing. And um, to kind of like just put my stuff aside for the moment mm -hmm. and be present for that person. And then we also have what we call here our post meeting and on staff, we can always talk and kind of um, have that ability to kind of get all that stuff out of our yeah. bodies. That we need. But I also do a lot of exercising, um, walking and everything like that. But I think my main focus is just knowing by me being here and just being present and listening that I am helping and making a world of difference for someone else. Yeah. That's, that's what happened for me. So I think just knowing that I'm doing that is what helps me to not maybe take in all of those emotions and those stories. Yeah. yeah How yeah. about yourself? Oh gosh. Um, I thought of the question for you, not, not my response. You know, I, I do think it is important what you said, you know, being present for others. I mm -hmm. also think that what, one of the things that, you know, my mom's death really taught me at a young age is kind of this the, the fleeting nature of things and the mm -hmm. beauty and the brevity of life. And I yeah. feel like at, you know, at the Dougie Center, we have this opportunity to see the sad, but also the beauty mm -hmm. yes. and the joy and the love because, you know, so much of what grief is, is love. I know it's a lot yeah. of other things too. It can oh, yeah, be you're right. And, you know, yeah. it can be all of those other things, but, but so much of what grief is, is love. And so yeah. really having that ability to just navigate and sit in the hard stuff, knowing yeah. that that's life and that's kind of the, the beauty of it. I remember one time kind of sharing with a staff member who was struggling with that aspect of right. being a staff that there's so much, there's so much, there's so many stories and there's so yeah. much hard things and there's so much grief and you know, yeah. we have this kind of lovely conversation that in, in all of this is life and it's real. And yeah. that sometimes the, this is where the, the beauty and the joy and kind of the, the good things of life come yeah. from that exactly that harder yeah. stuff. So that, that helps me, that yeah. keeps me going. Oh, I, um, I, yeah. And then certainly all the things outside of <laughs> the yeah. center, outside of right. my life at the yeah. center help too kind of yeah. trying to also be present for mm -hmm. my family yeah. and my friends and, you know, the, yeah. the things that I enjoy, the music yeah. I enjoy, the art that I enjoy, you know, all of those things really yeah. trying to stay in the moment as much as possible right. with the full range of life. And emotions. yeah, exactly. exactly. It, yeah. It can, you know, it can be hard. And I do think we have, um, you know, I think that we have a job that is unique to a lot of other jobs. It is, it is. Yeah. And I, I hear from a lot of people, lots of times, I just don't know if I could do that. And, you know, it's one of those things that it's for me, just being able to put aside how I'm feeling or in the moment and just going forward and being there and present for these families and just knowing it's, it's what was given to me. So yeah. I, I think that makes a difference. Um, yeah. One thing though, I thought about as you were talking was, um, Sometimes I wonder what I always get from people is, especially from my daughter who is now 34, they will say, well, isn't she over the death of her father? And, um, and aren't, aren't you? And I'm like, one thing I don't know that people really understand is that it, that person stays with you forever. Um, and something that a, a doctor told me was that in the moment my heart had a big, big, huge hole in it. 
And then as the years passed, my heart, the hole in my heart got smaller, but it will never go away. Yeah. And I think sometimes for people to understand that, that it's going to look different as we grow and as we morph. And there's sometimes where I still get a little bit angry, like, dang it, you're supposed to be here, you know, and yeah, and it's okay. It's okay to feel that, but just to yeah. know that it is something that can morph out for us Absolutely. in many different ways. And yeah. I'm thinking for you, especially being at such a young age and a tender age when your mom died. Yeah. That yeah. you must think about her a lot. Yeah. yeah. Oh all yeah, I do. I do. I think about her all the time and, and I'm grateful mm -hmm. that I have that opportunity to think about yeah. her and, and I get to share about her and her story and her life mm -hmm. so much because I work at the Dougie Center. Yeah. It's just yeah. expected that I can talk about my mom yeah. and I love yeah. that. <laughs> and I love that. And I, and I, that's the thing that I love here is that we can do that and we can talk about our person. And um, I think that's one of the important things that we do in groups. We do memorabilia and we like to think about that person and who they were or who they could have been just the happy times. It's not always sad. I mean, I think a lot of people think, isn't it always sad there? And it's like, no, it's not always sad. Yeah. We have a lot of laughter in this building. Absolutely. I mean, a lot. And I yeah. think that's great. Yeah. Yeah. And I think about, you know, for, for ourselves and for other professionals who are, you know, mm -hmm. in this, in this work, you know, I think one of the things that's beautiful about what we do is we do get to see that progression over time of right. families. You know, I don't want to say get better because it's not, right. as you mentioned, it's not getting better. Yeah. It's evolving over time, but we right. do get to see that progression and exactly. we get to see families coming in in this, their most vulnerable moments, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. and, and then see a year out, two years out, what that looks like and that mm -hmm. shift. And I think yeah. that's one of the powerful things about being on staff, and it's also one of the powerful things I think for volunteers and also for kids and families in our program, because they get to be turn into the helpers, right? They right. come and they're they're in this moment of, you know, is it am I ever going to be able to laugh? Am I ever going to be able to smile? And yeah. then over the time, yeah. they get to show other people what yeah. it looks like yeah. to be yeah. a year out, two yeah. years out, three years yeah. out from the death. Yeah. And yeah, exactly. And I think that's where that peer support piece comes in so handy. And and what it what I kind of alluded to a little bit at the very beginning, we're coming into a room of people that had maybe had their death six months to eight months out. And I had that ability to look across the room and see them smiling and know that there was hope and I would get there. I didn't know when I'd get there or how long it might take me, but I knew that there was hope. Yeah. I would get there and it would be okay. And when I say, okay, I don't mean like you, like you said, we don't just forget about it, but I'm able to move forward in my life. Yeah. And, you know, I still think about that person. I still grieve about that person, but I, am able to kind of move forward a little bit but yeah. yeah yeah that's so beautiful and i think it's you know just such a testament to this work um mm -hmm. you know not just at the dougie center but in the field of childhood bereavement that yes there are so many of us who have had experiences in one way or another that come back to this you know come come back to this work or, or for folks who come to our summer institute mm -hmm. who you know, maybe got support or maybe didn't get support yeah. and want to create that safe place for others. Oh, yeah. You know? That is amazing. Amazing. Yeah. We hear so many stories from others that come from all different places all over the United States and outside of the United States that have taken this training and just what they're getting and being able to take it back to their own community and helping others in their community. So it's not this program doesn't just serve what we have here in, in the in our area. It, it has moved out into yeah. so many areas in the United States, Japan, Africa, just different places like that. So, I mean, I just think that is really neat to be able to see that. And um, it's, you know, just listening and reflecting. I mean, I know there's more to it than that, but I mean, just those things yeah. make a huge difference for people. Absolutely. Yeah. One thing I've been thinking about a little as of late is just the the impact of lived experience mm -hmm. and kind of how important it is that those in the world who are trying to help and support folks that are grieving, right. really pay attention to that lived experience. Exactly. And 
you know, I know in the in the the kind of through the lens of equity and inclusion, we mm -hmm. we hear and I believe that it should be kind of nothing for us without us, right? right. So the people who are most impacted are making those, you know, making the decisions and also also really sharing their insights to help right. inform the rest of us. And I feel the same about grief and loss. And you know, I know that there's there can be such a push in certain aspects of the field to medicalize things or make right. things, um, you know, a diagnosis or those kinds of things. And I feel like one of the beautiful things about the work at the Dougie Center is it's really grounded in lived experience, right? And in mm -hmm. in what we hear and see day in and day mm -hmm. out from the thousands yeah. of people who come through our program. And I wonder, you know, I wonder if you have any thoughts on that. Like what, what's the value for you as a staff person in really centering your work in that lived experience? I think having that lived experience and, and knowing that our experiences are going to all be different, yeah. but knowing that others, when they come, I can walk beside them. I'm not able to like, Give them a book or an ABC or a one, two, three, or even what we've talked about, the stages of grief, those don't even necessarily apply to this because we we bounce back and forth in and out of these Absolutely. feelings and emotions. And so yes. having lived that experience, I can let others know what you're feeling is normal. It's okay. What may have worked for me or how I may have felt may not be the same for you, but that doesn't mean that you're not doing something right or this isn't okay to do this. I mean, right. we're all going to do it differently. Yes. And, so and there's nothing experience. wrong with you, right? No, there's, there's nothing, nothing wrong with you for, yeah. no. for having this, mm -hmm. this experience or right. for yeah. expressing yourself in your own way. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing wrong with, you know, just as we're sitting here, you know, my, my mom died 33 years ago. Your yeah. husband died how many years? About 30 years ago. So right? yeah. And, yeah. and we're still, you know, grieving them and, yeah. and also, um, you know, acknowledging them and loving them and mm -hmm. continuing mm -hmm. to have bonds yeah. with them. Yeah. And that's just so important. Exactly. Yeah. They're still part of our lives. They're not going to, just because they have died, doesn't mean they have left. I mean, that, that the physical person isn't here, but that amazing, wonderful person that you loved and, and had in your life for however long is still that important person and to be able to talk about that person, share stories. And that's the one thing that I love here is I can do that, whether, you know, I'm here as a staff person, I'm here as a volunteer, I have that ability to still be able to do that. I can do that with my kiddos in groups. I, I can hear their stories. They can hear my stories. Yeah. It's so powerful. And to know that even after X amount of years, I'm still telling my story, yeah. you know, and that they are going to be able to do that as well. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. that's beautiful. Well, our time is, I believe, just about wow. winding down. It goes by so quick, but I just yes. want to say thank you so much, Cheryl, yeah. for, for talking with me today about this and, and this really powerful, important piece mm -hmm. of kind of that, that lived experience. Um, yeah. I appreciate you talking with me about it and also just sharing your heart with the Dougie Center for yeah. all thank of these you. years, you know, 25 years as a volunteer, 14 years on staff. That's just yeah amazing so yeah. I'm, I'm grateful to work well, alongside you Cheryl thank you thank you well like I said earlier you were one of those kids that came back you were in a group and came back and look at you now and it's amazing to have someone as our executive director that talk about lived experience oh my goodness <laughs> here and able to you know move us forward on and so I yeah I just have enjoyed sitting here talking with you it's really great well thank, thank you. you Cheryl mm -hmm. thank you